What's up, CTA family? Welcome to the Compete Mentality Podcast. The Compete Mentality Podcast will host basketball coaches, players, and trainers from all around the state of Indiana, country, and world. The whole mission of the Compete Mentality Podcast is to motivate, educate, and inspire others to compete. Our definition of competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Lewis Jackson and Jordan Delks Basketball School. Please be looking to our social media platforms for more information on the Lewis Jackson and Jordan Delks Basketball School. And now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Coach Corey Dunn of Rossville High School. Coach, thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, to get on here and talk with you about basketball. Uh, hey, no doubt, in, uh, audience, this is really special for me. Uh, growing up in the town of Rossville, uh, basketball is everything in Rossville. And uh, Coach Dunn, uh, I'm just so grateful he gave us uh, his time this week. Uh, he had an unbelievable season uh, coaching the Hornets to an 18-8 and record, uh, just lost in the regional championship to Blackford and uh, Luke Brown. And they gave it all they had. They left it all in the all in the court. And as an alum, I am extremely proud to be a Hornet. And uh, for the way Coach Dunn has coached our kids up, and uh, the way they're representing uh, our hometown and where I'm from. So thank you so much for that, Coach. Hey, you're welcome. Um, I'm glad we could represent. Uh, that's what uh, we want to do: make everybody proud in this town. Hey, no doubt you, you did that. So as kind of we kick off, uh, Coach, we train a lot of basketball players. Um, we, we help our players, you know, uh, not just on the court, but off the court in the weight room, the strength and conditioning, uh, the nutrition. But with that being said, uh, we are big foodies as well. So I know basketball players are following, you know, their nutrition plans and everything, but uh, we love uh, a, a good cheap meal or a good restaurant. So give us your go-to restaurant right now and how you describe your, your order there. Uh, pretty much any, what I would call more authentic Mexican restaurant. And this isn't going to uh, win any prizes as far as, um, nutrition meals go, but, uh, the Pollo Toluca and I'm, I'm, I'm dead set on that. Uh, actually on our way back from your, um, camp there a couple weeks ago, we stopped at three amigos in Kokomo and that's I what it. I ordered. I love it. I love it. What, uh, what's your go-to in the, in the metropolis of Rossville? Um, you know, we don't have a lot of selection, uh, but if, you know, if it's pizza, we good Arnie's. If, uh, if I'm wanting, uh, tacos, it's, it's Dan demands, or if you want a steak, it's Teresa's. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. So coach, uh, I want to kind of dive in and, uh, to get into your background, kind of give a, give our audience a little background of who you are and how you got to where you are today. Um, well, I, I grew up, uh, on a farm you know, in Tipton County, in between Kokomo and Tipton. And uh, as a farm kid growing up, loved basketball. Uh, our community was super big into basketball, um, just like here at Rossville. And uh, so, you know, in the wintertime, if you're farming, there wasn't much else to do where I grew up, you were playing basketball. So that's how it all kind of started for me and uh, moved on to college, uh, spent a year playing ball in college, and then uh, really decided I want to get into coaching high school basketball. And I uh, was able to, to uh, go work while I was at Purdue. Um, I worked under Kent Cheesham at Clinton Prairie. And oh, yeah. you know, he was still is an unbelievable mentor for me. Very awesome. Absolutely. And uh, we uh, we actually crossed paths uh, in your coaching career. I recruited one of your players, Ty Jones yes. at yeah. Sheridan. I believe he was the all-time leading scorer at Sheridan. Yep, still is. Still, still is the all-time leading scorer. Yep. Still is. Man, he, he, he was fun to watch. So that's kind of where I met you first and uh, where we crossed paths. And you guys had a great year that year. I believe you were like 16 and four that, that season or something. Yeah, the, that was actually, um, you know, that was my first coaching job was at Sheridan. I, I was there for 10 years, eight years yep. as head coach. And uh, he was a part of the group that was the first group in, I don't know, like 40 years to put together back-to-back -to -back winning seasons at Sheridan. So, yeah, we had a pretty good year that year. Yeah, that, 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 and that's uh, for all of you uh, uh, Indiana high school junkies out there. That's that at Sheridan. It's a football town in, yep. in, in a basketball state. It, it's really uh, they are a big time football town. You come into the town. There's uh, 
there's uh, the championships all over the water tower, probably eight or nine would be my guess. Yeah. Uh, nine of them. Yep. Nine of them up there. Nine championships and, uh, coach was able to turn that program to back-to-back winning seasons uh, at Sheridan. So uh, tell us a little bit about why you got into coaching. Just, I got a lot of players right now uh, that I'm training yep. and uh, I, I, I love, I love training them on the court, but I love getting to know my players and helping them achieve, you know, their dreams off the court. And when I, if I ask a lot of my players, what do you want to do after playing? A lot of them will say coaching. So like, right. I got players listening to this podcast right now and uh, trying to figure out life and everything. So tell us about why you got into coaching. Well, first off, I, I you know it starts with uh, two, two big things that you, I enjoy. Uh, one, I love basketball. Um, have ever since I was a little guy going to Tri Central Games, yep. you know, watching Corey Fernung, oh, and yeah. those uh, '87 team yep. um, that they had at Tri Central, and yeah, you know, the atmosphere. I, I I may say this again later. Um, it's a drug. I mean, there in in my mind, there's not a better drug. Just like Saturday last yeah. Saturday night, uh, um, it was electric at uh, Lapel High School. So uh, you know, I grew up with that. I loved it. I loved the game. And then the other thing you got to love is I think you really got to love working with people. Um, and, I, and I really enjoy both those things. And you were talking about mentoring young men and, and helping them on, um, you know, not just coaching X's and O's as a high school basketball coach. You, you're you really trying to help mold mold young guys into, into being men. So I, I enjoy that. No doubt. And uh, you bringing up Corey Fernung and, uh, the Tri Central area. Uh, I, I, it brought back a name, Grayson Flitner. Oh my! Uh, yeah. And uh, that was back when I was in high school. He played at Tri Central High School. I'm actually training uh, Jake Chapman from Tri Central yep. right now, who's scoring a lot of points for them. And man, there I, there are so many good players that come out of our area in the in the Clinton County, Tipton County, Kokomo, Lafayette area. Absolutely. I'm kind of going off script here, putting you on the spot. <laughs> Who, who's, who's, who's the best player you've seen in our, in our area, in that Kokomo, uh, Tipton County, Lafayette area? I'm, I'm going to be biased in, in, in a few different ways here. I, I'm going to go completely against the, the school I grew up uh, with the biggest rivalry with. Um, and he may be arguably not the best, but he was my most favorite kid to watch play high school basketball. Sure. That's Mike Crawford. Okay. Mike Crawford from Tipton high school. Absolutely. Um, yeah. If you want a winner and you want to win, I, I think him, uh, obviously there's been some really good ones out of Lafayette, but I'm, I'm going to go, go East a little bit and uh, just talk about, you know, them a little. That, absolutely. And uh, for all you listeners, uh, I, I'm just going to flat out say, Oh man, it's, I might say Grayson Flinter is one of my, my personal favorite players to ever watch. And I'm trying to get a hold of that guy. So if anyone can get me in touch with Grayson Flinter, I will send you a piece of CTA gear of your choice. Uh, I would love to talk to him. I actually, I remember getting switched on to him off a ball screen, guarding him. (laughs) And uh, he was about probably 26 or seven feet deep and he let it fly and he didn't make it, and I, it was a sigh of relief. But I guarded him one possession. <laughs> that, there's a reason I guarded him one possession, <laughs> one possession only. And uh, he, he missed it. So, But that dude, he's got uh, the, the record for most three-pointers in the Dean Dome. He beat Kentucky. He beat Oklahoma. Um, I, he's just a prolific. And, and you'll, you'll appreciate this, and, and I hope there's some of these fans on, on here. Um, probably – the best single game performance in high school I ever witnessed was the day he put up 48 on Catholic in the regional uh, to beat Catholic. So uh, as a tri-central grad and Rossville basketball coach, that was a pretty good day. Hey, no doubt about it. I was, I was in the front row with uh, Derek Brenneman, uh, Brendan Miller. Uh, We were all Hornets that just got knocked out of the sectional lost to central Catholic. Yep. Uh, who we grew up playing in, in the same sectional against the Anthrops and Will Huberts and uh, quite the crew at, at Catholic. And we were going to watch the regional that we were so desperately trying to, uh, to get into, bring our town a sectional championship, never could. And um, we, we, that, I agree, that was the single most unbelievable performance. And I don't think I was, I was happier 
uh, that day to see him go off like that. So, uh, but, <laughs> but coach, um, tell our listeners a little bit about how you got the Rossville job and why you took it. Um, well, honestly, right out of college, I always wanted to come to Rossville. I, I always thought had it marked as a, as a school that I felt like, you know, I could coach and win at because of tradition. Sure. Um, you know, Rossville has a, a big tradition and, and where I grew up was very similar. Um, I never had the desire to go back home. Yep. I, I kind of wanted to go someplace else. Uh, but at the same time, um, who I married, great, wonderful woman that I have, my wife, uh, she, she wanted to stay around close to home too. And, and so did I, you know, we wanted to be, you know, we didn't want to move clear across the state. So yeah, sure. you know, Rossville was always one of those schools that I thought, you know what, I want to, I want to work at and coach at with their tradition. It's important. I, I feel like that's, that's a big thing. If, if it's not important to the community, then yeah. sometimes getting buy-in can be kind of tough. Um, but then I actually talked to uh, Bob Knapp twice uh, about the job. It came open, uh, about midway through my time at, at uh, Sheridan and they decided they were going to hire within and I respected that and I told Bob hey, if it ever comes up uh, I'm still going to be interested and you know three years later it came up and I called up Bob and you know the kind of the rest is a the history there yeah no doubt that and I, I'm I'm uh as, a, as an alum I, I'm very thankful that you got it and uh just Kat, you were kind of talking about what Rossville meet or what basketball means to the Rossville community. And um, our gym, uh, it seats, uh, it, let's see here. I got, Just I'm under 1,500. Yes. Uh, I'm on John Harrell. It says 1651. I don't know if that's accurate or not. No, but, I think that was back before they put all the new bleachers <laughs> in and they had to have uh, lo- yeah. wider aisles. Now, granted, that's what it seats when uh, Prairie comes to town or right. Catholic comes to town. Exactly. Because the, the uh, aisleways are full then. Yes. And so, but our town population uh, is, is now what? I, so I, I, I grew up in Rossville. I'm now uh, been removed. Haven't uh, back when I was living in Rossville, it was about 1500. It's, it's grown yep. a little it's, bit. It's still about the same. It kind of fluctuates. It went from 16 to, 1500 but so we have a gym just like most small towns in indiana that holds more than our population and that's pretty special but tell just kind of give our our, our listeners uh what basketball really means to the town um well i kind of hit on earlier about tradition uh you know, there there is a long-standing tradition here i mean the horns the, the camstras bob knapp gene milner um mickey mcgill Yes. Uh, he was a guy I had to guard, try to try to guard. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there, there's that tradition. Um, it's important to the town. And I think it's awesome that the town is the school's the hub mm-hmm. here in Rossville. Um, we have people come in uh, that just like to come watch games of middle school games. Even, you yeah. know, they, they don't have a kid playing or they just, Hey, they know there's a game going on that night or they know yeah. so-and-so's kids playing that they, they're coming in watching games. So it's, it's just, it means a lot to everybody, and um, I'll be honest. This past week, hearing uh, people's reaction of our team this year, um, I, I couldn't. I really can't even put into words how how it made me feel. Um, so so proud of my my players because you know they're they're the ones that have have done it. Um, but no, it it means a lot uh, when you got that tradition, community support. Uh, the players are willing to work hard. Uh, it. And that's that's why I wanted to come to Rossville right there. I mean, that, that's it. No, no doubt. And uh, I remember playing in the uh, the All Star, the Clinton County All Star game. I don't know if they're still doing that. Uh, uh, they were. They haven't done it in the last. They you know they didn't do it last year. Yeah, yeah. So I remember playing in the Clinton County All Star game at Case Arena, and this is where the the county high school All Stars play against some some Clinton County alums. Yep. And and I remember. Uh, playing against Mickey. I actually had never met Mickey. Obviously saw his records and uh, looked at his picture every day going down the hallway at Rossville uh, among all the other legends you mentioned. And uh, uh, I remember him saying, uh, uh, I hit a couple threes. I could shoot it a little bit. And uh, he said, yep. He said, us guys in Rossville, he said, uh, he said, we behave and shoot the ball. He said, that if you're from <laughs> Rossville, you behave and shoot the ball. I'll never forget yep. him saying that. Uh, he said I had hit a couple threes in a row at the All-Star game. 
And uh, he said that uh, to some of the uh, some of the other alums on his team. Yep, he he can shoot it, so he'll behave and shoot the ball. So that's a little bit about uh, being from <laughs> Rockville. But um, tell us a little bit about your team this year, man. I loved watching you guys, and uh, tell us about your team, your personnel, and really uh, what made you guys so good. The quality that made you guys so good. Well, uh, I'll start off with what I feel like made us so good um, and so competitive every night. Um, and that's toughness. Mm -hmm. This is by far the toughest team um, I've ever coached. And, wow. and we have a motto that we live by. I mean, our, our number one thing that we hang our hat on, it, it, it doesn't always show through, but is, is toughness. Um, it, it's on the board before every game. Uh, and that's mental toughness, physical toughness. Um, so right there in itself, this being the, the toughest team I've ever coached, um, the toughest leaders that I've ever had. That's that's why we were um, literally, and, and this, you know, we can look back at our schedule, and we we re right now could be setting twenty three and two, oh, yeah. I mean, or, you know, twenty four yeah. and two, and not unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we didn't get a few games uh, closed out the way we wanted, but I think yeah. we learned from them that way. But yes, right there, can. toughness. Um, yeah. It, we don't have, I mean, we, we have a couple of pretty good players and, and Damon Shaw really showed yep. what, what type of player he was in the tournament. No doubt. Um, but we, when, you know, I'm going over stats right now to go to the Hoosier basketball record book. I'm not filling that stat sheet up with individuals. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, we are a team that uh, played together and we knew we had to play really, really tough and scrappy because we didn't have uh well, we didn't have a Luke Brown on our team, that's for sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So yeah, that that kind of describes my team as far as, and it, it made it fun to coach because it, they would get after it in practice, they would bust their tail, um, and then you knew every night they were going to give uh, really good effort. You know, sometimes you can have those really good teams and they forget to get off the bus. Yeah. Um, that, that usually was not us. Um, I didn't have to worry about that with this group. Yeah, no doubt, uh, man. That's that's gives me chills uh, he hearing that about your team. And they were an absolutely tough team, and uh, I love I love hearing you say that they they learned their lessons um, and were together. Um, I think one of the lessons uh, you learned was December twenty second at Carroll, losing forty two forty five, and then it wouldn't have mattered March sixth, uh, getting the W forty five forty four. Tell us a little bit about the lesson you learned from that specific matchup there and what made the difference in winning the next time. You know, I, I think sometimes when you don't have that guy that, that necessarily is, you know, it's going to him. Yep. You know, he's every time, you know, for instance, Blackford. Yeah. They knew who was going to have the ball in a situation like that. That really wasn't our team. You know, we, throughout the course of the year, we were trying to figure out that who we need to go to, how we need to go. And, Oftentimes, our problem was we didn't have that guy. Sure. We needed to do it together. And um, we made some key turnovers several times in those situations throughout the, the course of the season instead of just taking what was given to us. Um, and then there in the sectional championship game, instead of making the wrong decision, we, we made the right decision. You know, he had, he had trust in his teammate. It was the right read. Um, you know, Caleb catches it and fires it yeah. without having to think about it. And, you know, we move on to regional, but <laughs> just the week prior, we lose an overtime game to Tipton on the right. very same play. Yep. And my point guard turns it over. He travels. He tried doing too much. So, you know, we, we lost a game like that in that same situation to try central player tried doing too much. We, we get a turnover with 20 seconds to go. We lose a game. So for sure, you know, learning from those experiences, I think definitely paid off. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, it, it was really fun to, uh, see you develop uh, your team and your players as the year went on. And, uh, th and uh, that's, that's really what, where I want to transition our conversation is uh, to the player development topic. And uh, at Compete Training Academy, that's, that's our bread and butter. That's what we do uh, is we develop players. And so I'm, I'm curious of your philosophy in terms of training. Uh, when you get a player in your program, what is your player development philosophy? Well, we, we focus on three three main things, and that, that's going to be our skill work, our strength, and our, our speed and agility. Um, the first one, we've always pounded in. I mean, 
skill work, skill work, skill work. Even, uh, I mean, it could be a February, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even yeah. maybe Thursday practice. But we're our first 40 minutes, maybe to an hour of practice is, is still skill related and shooting and and uh, ball handling and, and those types of things. So I always feel like we can't do that enough. Um, we finally, <laughs> after you know this, uh, the weight room here at Rossville it used to be a closet. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we find not that you can't do stuff in those, but I, I couldn't even fit my team in it. Yeah. So uh, definitely not safely. Um, this fall, we we finally got a weight room um, adequate. Uh, we got some equipment, uh, and so now we're we're really starting to implement um, the speed and agility and the, the strength training even more so than what we did before. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of our our three phases. Um, and like I said, the, the latter two are, are still a work in progress and our guys are adjusting and, and we're going to be hitting it really hard here in the off season. Absolutely. And uh, that actually gave me chills when you said you spent 40 minutes, sometimes Monday through Thursday on yeah. skill work. And uh, I had, I've had a lot of coaches uh, on this podcast um, and uh, you and uh, coach Weingar from Fishers are the only ones that have, that have, come out and said over a half an hour. He, they, yeah. Both of you guys are committing at least 40 minutes. He, I think he said 40 to 45 as well yeah. uh, to uh, skill development, even during the season. I think that's, that's so important. Um, and I think that that's uh, where sometimes a lot of uh, coaches miss the boat uh, of kind of, and, and, and as a coach, it's hard to, uh, you got so much you need to prepare for Absolutely. and put yeah. in and scouting and uh, team concepts, but uh, you just can't. I think I, I think that's really cool and speaks, Coach Coach Weingar. I think they were sixteen and four this year. Um, you guys were eighteen and eight going to the regional championship, and that speaks. Uh, I think that's a direct reflection. Your records and success is a direct reflection of your your emphasis on player development. So, Coach, um, I want to go back really to um, the, the the topic of coaching and. Uh, um, like I said, I got a lot of players who want to coach someday. Um, what advice would you give to aspiring coaches just about getting into coaching? Um, you know, I always feel like it's a tough one. You know, I think about when I was younger and, and why I wanted to coach. You know, I, I wanted to coach because I, I just want, I love the game. I, I loved working with other players. Um, and I, I always felt like I was a leader on the floors as a player. And I think sometimes if you're a leader, you're going to have those tendencies to want to coach. Um, you know, I, it's just kind of built in you. No doubt. But for, for somebody aspiring to, I would tell them, uh, hmm, wow, you know, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Are you, are you doing it for you? Or are you doing it because you want to help and assist others? Hmm. Um, because if you're doing it for just yourself, I, I always feel like, and, and, and we've all seen those, those types of people in any type of profession, um, just feel like it catches up to them. Uh, so that's a big thing. Um, and then the other thing, uh, I was young, pretty young when I got my first head coaching job and uh, some veteran, a, a veteran coach told me that, make sure to stay true to yourself, to your core values yep. and, and do, do the things that, you know is right, uh, treat people right, and you'll be able to sleep at night. And, mm. and I, I kind of, that's stayed with me. That's not always easy. It's not easy to, to do that. Um, it's not easy to maybe have to deal with that parent or a player. Um, but if, if I do it the way I know is right, um, then I can, I can sleep easy at night. Yeah. Uh, being, being fair, you know, to, to somebody. And then two, uh, two more things, you know, make sure you're always, you're willing to learn and listen. Uh, we're all guilty of that when we're young of maybe thinking we know more than we know. Sure. Uh, I, I had some great mentors when I was at Sheridan. I worked yeah. under two former varsity basketball coaches and I, I looked up to them uh, and they helped me out a great deal. Um, Ed Baker and Brian Jones, they were my two principals. Yep. Um, and man, they, they helped, they helped mold me a little bit and give me a lot of guidance and, I don't, you know, I, I maybe don't, don't make it to Rossville without guys like that. And then make sure you find a wife that, that loves it too. 
because no uh, you're going to spend a lot of hours um, and, and make sure uh, she's one to support you. Um, so, yeah, that's I, I would say that's the big, big keys uh, to, you know, being able to make it. No doubt. And that, that, that's fantastic advice. And I love just the, the comment you mentioned of doing the right thing and being able to sleep at night. And uh, you see so many times in the coaching profession of uh, different programs, especially at the higher level in college basketball, you know, they get caught cheating or doing things the wrong way and uh, making it yep. about themselves. And you're right. It, it, one day it catches up to you. And so um, I think it's, it's always uh it, it, never take the easy way out. If you're, if you're listening to this podcast and you want to be a coach and uh, or in whatever profession you're going, you're going for, uh, don't take the easy way out, compete, do what God calls you to do, even when it's hard, do it the right way. And, uh, and, and your hard work will pay off. And it, it's cool to see a coach like coach Dunn who treats the game the right way who treats people the right way, uh, having success uh, at my alma mater uh, coach, uh, you lead young men on a daily basis. Um, we're, uh, we're big on leadership at Compete Training yep. Academy and developing leaders, not just players. Uh, what do you think is the most important quality for a leader to have? Man, that's, that is a, uh, that, that's a tough question to answer sure. in, in one quality. Right. Uh, especially for a guy that hangs his hat on uh, wanting a leader. Uh, yeah. You know, as a coach, I, I feel like as a coach, if I don't have a leader on the floor, a leader, a player leader, then I'm at a big, big, big disadvantage. No doubt. Um, I, you know, you hear it all the time. Uh, player led team is much better than a coach led team. And I full heartedly believe that. I think that's that it's got a mold. Um, so I guess, you know, I lead kids um, and I'm always preaching, looking for leaders, trying to build leaders. Um, I think you can build them. I don't think you can make them. Uh, that's just my opinion. Yep. Uh, every, not everybody is built to be, uh, you know, made to be a leader. Um, so I think if I had to say in one thing, respect. Mm. Um, if I if I don't respect my players, how am I ever going to get respect from them? Um, and and in turn, you know, you've got to be able to get that respect from them. Uh, not only do I have to respect them, I've got to I've got to find a way to make them respect me. Um, and then I guess I, I would like to piggyback off that with uh, you got to be able to communicate with your players. Um, and if, if you don't have some level of confidence, if you're not confident in what you're doing, your players are going to see right through it. Um, and, and I think that goes along with, you know, I'm kind of talking about it from the coaching perspective, but. I almost would rather focus on the player perspective because uh, I've been coaching for 20 years now, 15 years as a head coach. Um, I haven't had hardly any leaders, what I, what I call true leaders. And, and that's one reason why our team was so successful this year is I had a leader on our team. Mm -hmm. I actually had a couple, but definitely one that um, really pushed others uh, to be better uh, and led the right way. Um, so yeah, it's, I know I'm probably rambling on about leadership because that's a big, big, big thing. And, and I value that at a high, high level. No doubt. No, that, that was a fantastic answer. Uh, I loved everything you said there. Uh, actually, uh, Lewis Jackson, former point guard at Purdue University, and I were having this discussion last night in the gym. Uh, we were just, we were working out and uh, there was another, a, a couple other players in there. And um, we were talking about, he I love training him. He's one of the best leaders to ever come through Purdue University, all-time winning as point guard in, uh, in Purdue history. And uh, he was talking about respect, exactly what you just said. This is last yeah. night. Uh, we're in the gym, and he's talking about to the players, uh, re respecting, respecting their coach, uh, respecting each other, respecting the game, those three right. components. And um, – uh, that, that, I think that's, that's pretty cool. That was the one thing he talked about as well last night. And, uh, in, in this particular situation, uh, I had, we had some players that, uh, were not changing, uh, uh, some things that be, that we were trying to implement into their game. Uh, being coachable, uh, is a skill set. I mean, not, there's not a lot of players that, uh, if you are coachable, you will, you will get better. 
Uh, yes. But there, but there's, uh, and you got to have respect for your coach uh, to, to get better, to be coachable. And uh, Lewis was saying that to some players last night. So I thought that was really cool that you said that. But uh, coach, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Hey, today I appreciate the it. Podcast. Um, that, uh, that means a lot for you to give us your time today and uh, just talk shop. I had an absolute blast in, a, in, a, in uh, just talking about your team and uh, your career and uh, where you guys are going. I'm excited to see the future for Rossville basketball is in, in great hands and it has an extremely bright future. I appreciate it, Jordan. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's always great to talk basketball with you guys and uh, uh, I can't wait to get some kid, more kids out to, to work with you guys and uh, should be good. Absolutely. And uh, we'll definitely uh, have to continue uh, uh, th these, uh, these conversations about basketball. Really enjoyed it. And uh, Compete Training Academy family, always remember that competing is doing what God is calling you to do, even when it's hard.